I want us to turn now <clears throat> uh, to uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 18. Verse 18. It'll be up on the board, Amplified Bible. I preached from them all. Right now I'm hung up on the Amplified. Well then, as one man, now Paul's talking. He's talking to the people of his day. He's talking to us. These, these were written by Paul, the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to see these two uh, verses of scriptures. They are profound. And it says, well, then, as one man's trespass, one man's false step and falling away led to condemnation for all men. Now, sometimes we get hung up right there. And that's all we preach. Well, that's the bad news. <laughs> but the other part of that scripture is the good news. So one man's act of righteousness. Now, who is the first man? Adam. All right. So because of Adam, we all became sinners. Okay. So as Adam passed the, his DNA down through the generations, uh, when Adam fell, there was a big change in him. One was that his spirit died. But look what it says. So one man's act of righteousness leads to acquittal and right standing with God and life for all men. Now, who is that man? That's Jesus Christ. That's the good news. Now, if we're not careful as saints of God, how many of you know once you are born again, you are not a sinner. Now, if you believe that, raise your hand. All right. Very good. You have Christ in you. You have become righteous. Now you are a saint. You are a child of God. We have been adopted into his family. We have an inheritance kept for us in heaven. We have many privileges by being a child of God right now. While we're still on earth. Now, we're not down here very long. Uh, you know, I'm 81. Uh, you know, I might live to be 100. No amens on that. Uh, <laughs> I may die at 82. Amen. <laughs> Lord, help me with that sense of humor. Okay. <clears throat> But you're free. You got to see yourself free now from the guilt of sin and sin. If you don't, the devil it will have you go around the same old mountain all the days of your life and your head will hang low. I love that song. I don't care what happens down here. Nothing changes with our relationship with God, regardless if you lose your job or something bad happens or like the young man that lost his uh, right, uh, uh, not right arm, but right hand, his name was still written in the Lamb's book, uh, uh, the Lamb's book of life in heaven. God is still his heavenly Father. We may have a bad day. God is still God. God is still our heavenly Father. We still have the victory regardless of how our day goes. We may be tired, exhausted, Wow, what a day. Nothing changes in the atmosphere up there in heaven. Your name is still written in the Lamb's book. God still loves you. He's on the throne. Everything is just as calm and peaceful as it is, even though down here it may be ruffle, duffle, duffle. Nothing changes. Now, that's a powerful thought. Now, let's, let's move to the, the verse 19, okay? Verse 19 up there now. For just as by one man's disobedience that we named him, falling to hear heedlessness and carelessness, that many were constituted sinners. Okay, so at one time before we became a Christian, we were constituted as a sinner. So by one man's obedience, that many will be constituted righteous, made acceptable to God, brought into right standing with him. By what Christ did on the cross. Now, those are just words to some people. 
Well, they're not just words to me. Are they just words to you? Have you not, don't you know that within yourself that you've been marked not guilty, that you are righteous, that you're justified, that you're sanctified, that you've been adopted into the family of God? See, once you believe that, and that gets into your spirit, see, the Word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. And when it can get into our spirit, out of our brain, into our spirit, man, you'll hear uh, something like this. A hallelujah, free at last. Hallelujah, free at last. Nothing has changed, but inside in your spirit, you finally get the message you're clear before God. You've been reconciled back to God. You've been made friendly again with God by what Christ did on the cross. Somebody shout, anybody. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. Just let that get down in your spirit. The striving is over. You can't do anything to make yourself worthy to God. You have to accept what he did for you. That was settled in the garden. Lord, did there be any other way? No, there's not. There's only one way. And that's what Jesus did on that cross for you and me. And you might, the quicker you accept it, the quicker you're going to come alive in God. i tell you what. You'll even look better. You'll be, you girls will be pretty. Well, you are pretty. And you, us men will get good looking. You know, uh, we got on the elevator the other day. We visited this particular person in the hospital. It might have been yesterday. I don't know. Yeah, probably. What is it? Yeah, probably yesterday. And this woman, this woman says to Susan, "Where did this pr pretty woman woman come from?" Talking about Susan. Oh, I said she's my wife. We've been married sixty years. That's how you will look after you're married with your husband after sixty years if you're like me. If he's like me. Oh, <laughs> you might as well See, have a little fun on your way on the journey. Everything don't have to be sad. Man, we are victorious. We are victorious because of him. We live. I live and move and have my being because of him. I have eternal life. Can you imagine eternal life in a glorified body? What are you going to do today, Bob? Well, Frank and, 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 and uh, Willie and me and uh, some of the other men in the church, we're going over to this other planet. We're going to check it out. The Lord wants us to go over there and see what, check that out, see if we can straighten that mess up over there. <laughs> Folks, this is just a little taste of it down here. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, I have tasted. I tell you, I've tasted these years, and I, I like what I taste. Man, I like my fried chicken and steak and potatoes, but I tell you, I've tasted what the Lord has done. It burns in my bones. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Man, that, the fellowship that I have with God, the fellowship I have with my wife, some of the best fellowship I have with my wife is in the morning when we wake up. I say, you awake, darling. I'm trying to get awake. I think it's going to be a pretty day. Well, let's get up and check it out. Well, you get up first. <laughs> Put the coffee on, and I'll be there. <laughs> and we laugh. We laugh about nothing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She looks at me with my hair all up like this, you know. Her hair standing out like this. I go, ah, look at there, that's funny. <laughs> we just have a great, you know, laughter is, 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 is better than castor oil. <laughs> you know, when I was a boy, that's what they give me. It took care of everything. If you had a frown on your face, it left.
When Susan and me first got married, you know, must have been about a year, I got a little stopped up inside, and she got she gave me some castor oil. I knew that that was no ordinary spoon. It, it looked more like a shovel to me. And I stayed on the potty all night. And she's over there in the bed sleeping. And I'm over there. Well, let's don't go that way. Hallelujah. But I tell you, <clears throat> let's move on, Bob, before you get in trouble. Okay. But we need to see and grasp what the Lord has done. Yeah, by one man we all became sinners at one time. But by the other man, Jesus Christ, we've been made righteous. I want us to turn, if you will, to uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. And let's look at this verse of Scripture. Hallelujah. This is good. Therefore, since we are justified, everybody say, I'm justified. I'm justified. Now that means just as if you have never sinned. Listen, this is no uh, cover-up deal. God has done something tremendously. I mean, we are no more sinners. We are the children of God. We are sons of the living God. We have God living in us. The power is not of the vessel. It is of God. We have the Holy Ghost living in us. He teaches us. He directs us. He guides us. He empowers us. He gives us victory 24-7. Now, we have another adversary, the devil, and most, so many Christians just yield to him. You don't yield to him. You yield to God. You, you submit to God, and you resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, I learned that two years I went through absolute darkness as a man of God. I felt like God didn't even exist. But I tell you what, I knew the Word of God. I stood on the Word of God. At times I felt my head was going to be crushed. And I said, like Job, though I, I, knew, I, knew, I knew the Lord wasn't going to leave Job, and I knew, I knew he didn't go leave me either. He says, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm for you. I'm for you. I'm not against you. I'm your father. Would a father be against his children? No. If our earthly fathers know how to give us good things, how much more will our heavenly father give us? We have got to see God in a different light and be able to fellowship with God. That's what he wants. He wants fellowship with you 24-7. He wants fellowship with me. Yes, our sins are forgiven, but we have been brought to God by Christ. Look at what it says. Therefore, since we are justified. Say, I'm justified right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not three weeks from now. Right now, you are justified in the sight of God. You can go into the throne room of God, and you can have fellowship with God. You can get the grace and the mercy you need for every situation. No wonder the Hebrew writer says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Listen. So therefore, so therefore, so therefore, since we are justified right now, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through faith, let us grasp the fact, let us grasp the fact, let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The blood has not lost its power. Well, Bob, what would happen if I, I did sin? And I didn't mean to, but I did sin. Uh, God has taken care of that. He's prepared. 1 John 1, 9. Let's see what it says. Because we're walking along down here. We're shouting the victory. Glory to God. 1 John 1, 9. My goodness, I shouldn't have said that to my wife. Oh, my goodness. Why did I open my mouth? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. If we freely admit that we have sinned. Now, we're talking to Christians here. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose and thought and action. Now, let's stop for a moment. I want you to look at that scripture. Is God a liar? How many times, and I'm putting me in the pot, we've asked God to forgive us, and ten minutes later we ask him again. <laughs> just, just in case it didn't click the first time. <laughs> I've done that so many times. And then God says, Bob, what are you going to believe me? All you got to do is confess it one time. I don't lie. I said I'd cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Put the King James up there, uh, RJ. Everybody's used to that one. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. Now, do you imagine in your mind that God thought that even though we became a child of God, we were born again, not by our own efforts, but God himself caused us to be born again. Why did God put that in the scriptures? Because he knew sometimes his children would get in the cookie jar when they weren't supposed to get into the cookie jar. Johnny, you've been eating cookies again? Oh, no, Mom, I haven't eaten no cookies. <laughs> What's all that on your lips? I don't know. It looked like cookies to me. Oh, well, I, 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 it was the devil. He made me do it. Mama, don't beat me. But, you know, God is so wonderful. He knew that at times we were going to mess up. How many have kids in here and you think they're perfect? And they ain't going to never mess up. Oh, boy, that's dreaming, isn't it? And what do you do? We won't go that way. But look what God does. He forgives us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you've been cleansed from all unrighteousness, if you've been forgiven of your sins, I ask you a question. Now, once you've done that, once you've confessed it, what sin do you have? See? Now, if we don't accept that, the devil's going to eat us alive. And you got to stand up and say, devil, let me tell you something. My God don't lie. You lie. You're the father of all lies. God said in his holy word, if I would confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I'm clean by the blood of the lamb, and the blood of the lamb has not lost its power. It flows to the highest mountain, to the lowest valley. I'm clean by the blood of the Lamb. I overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony, and I love not my life unto death. I'm clean before God. I'm holy. I'm righteous with his righteousness, with his holiness. Yeah, I don't have any myself. I've looked around for years and couldn't find any. But I tell you what, I've been made and you've been made righteous with his righteousness. Can God, can God lie? No, God is not a man that he should lie. And there are so many people hanging their heads down, not knowing that victory is right there, right there. And they're letting the devil deceive them and makes them feel they're dirty and they're, and they're not uh, good Christian people, that God has somehow pushed them to one side. The devil can deceive people that way. I ministered to them a lot in my day. Absolutely. How do you see yourself right now? How do you see yourself right now? Look into the mirror of God's Word. Accept it. Receive it. You'll release the power of the Holy Ghost in you like you've never seen before. Life 
He's come to give us life. We have life. We have eternal life. Resurrected life. And when the church can grab what the Lord has done, what the Lord has done. Woo! Man, I tell you, it's exciting. Get back to Romans chapter uh, 5. And let's look at verse 2. Hallelujah. Uh, let's put verse 1 up there first. I'm sorry, uh, RJ. I want to I see something here. Now look at it. Let us grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold. Notice this. And to enjoy. To enjoy. To enjoy the reconciliation. To enjoy that we've been made friendly again with God. To enjoy that we're children of God. To enjoy the Father. To enjoy the good things of God. To enjoy the blessings of God. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But not many uh, Christian people today are enjoying what the Lord has done. Oh, when you see what the Lord has done and you just receive it by faith, glory to God, it makes you want to preach. Will it? Yes, Woo! Hallelujah! Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, that's it. Don't get radical on me. Don't get radical on me. All right, look at that. We were talking about peace. Remember last uh, Wednesday as, as uh, Frank ministered to all of us so graciously about impartation of that peace. Peace. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule your heart. Don't let all this stuff down here cause you trouble. Man, I get telephone calls in the middle of the night. I get telephone calls even with my own grandchildren. Got fired. What do you mean? He just got the job last week. I got a grandson just the other day. Seriously. I was so happy when he got a job. Bringing a little money in. That's great. That's going to help Grandpa out too, I know. Hallelujah. A week later, it was only a part-time job, Grandpa. It was a short one, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right, let's get off of that. Okay. Look at it. Having the peace of reconciliation. What, what, what do you mean the peace of reconciliation? We've been made friendly with God. God's our friend. He's not our enemy. The devil has deceived people and makes people think that God is their enemy and their problem. He is not their problem. He's their problem solver. All of this Junk in our minds have to be ripped out, cleansed out, imaginations, wrong thinking, lies of the devil. God is not a harsh man. Oh, he doesn't overlook sin. He didn't have to overlook sin. Christ paid the price at Calvary. Once and for all, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, once and for all, Christ died, took care of every sin in the past, the present, and the future that we would ever do. The sin problem has been solved. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Say, sin will not have dominion over me. How many would let a rattlesnake in your house? We'll see if we can't arrange it if you want one. How many would let sin in their house? I think you better have a rattlesnake. It's more safer. Can't you imagine sleeping in your house and somewhere in your house every crack, every little noise you make. How many ever had that in your house all by yourself and it begins to crack? I have. That's why I like Susan in bed with me. I can hold on to her. <laughs> ain't no devil, oh, ain't no snake or devil going to bother me with Susan in bed with me. I tell you that right now. She'll get them with good. All right. We need to enjoy the peace of reconciliation. The fact it's over. What Adam has done is dealt with. Christ has took care of it all for us. 
Now, enjoy your reconciliation. Enjoy your peace of reconciliation. Made friendly again with God. God's not mad at none of us. You think God's going to run around with all of his children that he's got and, and they get, a, get do this wrong or maybe they do, and he's going he's to get mad at everybody? I mean, no. Now, for those that reject his son, for those that refuse to receive his reconciliation, that's another story. We're not talking about the unbeliever tonight. And they can, they can come on over where we're at on this side of the cross, on the resurrected side too, if they humble themselves. It's one thing that I've learned, and I've been, you read the Bible, and you'll find that God really, really will bless a man and a woman that will humble themselves. You'll see that scripture so much. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know? I love it. The peace of reconcil reconciliation to hold, to enjoy. Have you ever held a, a, a piece of chicken in your hand? That woke some of you up. I know that would wake you up. And you just know, chewing on that thing and eating that piece of meat and, and that old hot biscuit with butter in it over there. And you, you, you enjoy in that biscuit, you know. And, and, the, and the next time you do that, just say, this reminds me of enjoying my, my, the peace of my reconciliation. I have peace with God, and God's at peace with me. And we are one in the Spirit. You get down to that bone, you know, and you just, you know, now, of course, you know, today people just throw, you know, back when I was coming up into the 30s, you ate the, you ate the pan and licked your plate out. Never had to wash your plate. We just lick them out and put them up on the shelf. <laughs> I enjoyed eating that, and I enjoy the peace of reconciliation that I hold, I enjoy that that I have from God Almighty. Woo! Glory! God ain't no party pooper. He wants his children to know the war is over. Yeah, you might have a few tough times down here. I've been in the hospital. I've had the doctors work me over good. We won't go into that, Bob. Okay. Look at verse 2. Let's go to verse 2. Through him, through Christ, also we have our excess, excess, entrance, introduction, by faith, into this grace, into this grace. Look at that. Through him. You don't have to work it up. You just receive it. You have entrance. Introduction. How? By faith into this grace, state of God's favor. Everybody say, God's favor. We are in God's favor. We are in God's favor. Well, suppose I, I do wrong. Somebody tell me. First what? First what? Right. Well, suppose I have an imagination of, of something, and I'm thinking bad uh, towards somebody. What did I do with that? Casting down imaginations, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations, just cast it down. A mosquito lands on your head, what do you do? Huh? Here, here let me take care of it. I, I'll take care of it. Uh, if an imagination gets in your mind, I'll take care of it. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you do. See, all the thoughts that you think is not your thoughts. Hello? The enemy. Satan can project. Those are fiery darts. Boy, I tell you, when I learned that, I mean, I had in my day, I've had some Lulu thoughts. Of course, you guys have never had no Lulu thoughts, I know. What is a Lulu thought? You know what a Lulu thought is. <laughs> ah, yeah. 
After about 10 minutes thinking about it, wait a minute, I need to cast that down. That's what you do. Has anybody had any bad imaginations today? Let's see your hands. Good. Some of you ain't got no brain. <laughs> Cast it down. I mean, just all of a sudden it just floats across your brain, you know, and you think about it. Well, I know exactly what to do. Just like a mosquito, knock him off and go on. How many of you have ever been out there and, 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 and you're raking leaves and the gnats are about to eat you alive, huh? What do you do besides the jitterbug? <laughs> Those gnats are bad. I mean, you really got to fight, you know. All right, but look at that. Through him also we have our excess, entrance, introduction, by faith into this grace. That, that's a state of God's favor. We have God's favor, unmerited favor. Grace is God's unmerited favor. In grace, there's power, there's love, there's overcoming. Whatever we need to overcome is it's in grace. Notice this, in which we firmly and safely stand and let us rejoice and exalt in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. So there should be a real excitement in our spirit every day. Just in the morning when I get up, which is a miracle, <laughs> I say, good morning, Holy Spirit, or good morning, Lord. Then I look at Susan and I say, my goodness, what happened to you, darling? Are you okay? Oh, you look so beautiful, darling. Oh, I like your hair that way. It looks good. <laughs> Y'all don't do that? Don't you all ever have any fun? <laughs> Two old people together. It's so, it's so funny. Let's move from there, Bob. Okay. Wow, look at that. Mm, we have favor with God. He's not mad at us no more in which we firmly and safely stand. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Have you learned in, a, in the most difficult time of your life that you, you can rejoice? I mean, this unexpected bill comes into the mail. I mean, you were all jivey till you go to the mailbox. You know, you go to the mailbox like this, oh... You look in there and you open this thing up and you come home to the house like this. <laughs> Rise up, my child. That's not the end of your life. That's not all your life. That's just one little speck of your life. Stand there in the midst of the storm and say, Thus save the Lord. Whatever comes to your mind after that. <laughs> Can you imagine uh, uh, Moses and there's Pharaoh coming down. He's got three million people out there and and, and the, the, there's the sea there, and they don't have no guns or airplanes or tanks or anything. He's got this staff. He scratches his back with it every once in a while, you know. What you got in your hand? Raise it. See the salvation of the Lord. I love when God delivers me. I can tell you many stories that God has delivered me. David said, he's delivered me from the, from the lion and the bear. And you uncircumcised Philistine, he's going to deliver you in my hands today. Brother, that's a true story. We need to get some spirit of power <clears throat> and victorious warrior. Become a warrior. Quit being a hanky-panky and be a warrior. Draw your sword, the two-edged sword. Where's my sword at, Oliver? Boy, I got right. <laughs> and yeah, this will take care of them. Listen, the Word of God 
The Word of God is more powerful than any two-edged sword. The Word of God, spoken by a man of faith and strength, a man that believes the Word of God. Satan, you will not dominate me anymore. You will not dominate my family. You will not destroy my family. I visited a, a man this week. He's, he's back in his chair. They sent him home to die. I said, you've been reading the word in him? Not really like I should. And she's like, I just fall asleep. That's all I want to do. Well, the medication you take and is putting you to sleep. Get into the Word of God. It will become alive to you. It can become medicine to your flesh. My two daughters, I'll put this up there in case any of you want to mess with me. I'll just put that there. Listen, you're looking at a man that's seen God deliver people. My two daughters, 14 and 16, had, one had 19 warts, the other had 16 warts. And what really, what really hurt their feelings, they couldn't wash the dishes. <laughs> and they looked at me and smiled when they said that. <clears throat> this is where the scripture sheets came into being. We learned that the Word of God is like a medicine even to the flesh. So we made up these scriptures on healing and all. And then I told them now, every day, twice a day, you say these scriptures. It'll take you about 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the morning and at David. And they started doing that. The first month went by, nothing happened. Not one wart. It looks like they're growing. Oh, look, Dad, I got a new one. Yeah, I see that. But I don't look at what I see. For those things that I see are temporary. Do we understand they're temporary? This little time down here is nothing. We have eternities upon eternities to live in a glorified body. But God has, made, uh, has given us His Word. Christ, He sent His Word to heal them. So they confessed, but I noticed after a month, every wart was still there, healthy and strong, but their spirit man was getting stronger. And there's a scripture that says that the spirit of a man, when the spirit of the man is strong, he can endure hardships and stresses with no problem. Now, I can't remember the scripture. I read that Sunday uh, I think it might be Proverbs 5 something. I can't remember, but it's a good scripture. So another week went by. Not another. Yeah, another week. Their spirit man was getting strong. It was when they prayed, it wasn't like, well, now, Lord, you know, uh, uh, no, man. I mean, they spoke the word of God with boldness. Uh, two months went by. Not a wart disappeared. All the congregation was looking at me. Yeah. Mm hmm. Two months and a half, every wart was gone. And they've never come back. And they're in their 50s now. We have saw that right before our very eyes. Those things begin to just bow under the Word of God. But they were faithful, persistent in speaking the Word of God. How many ever ever split any wood in this place? Sometimes you've got to hit it more than one time. That's why every morning Susan and me gets in the Word. We speak the Word. In the, in, uh, we drive along, and I'll say a scripture. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say I, I picked the easy one first. Jesus wept. That way she won't have that one. And she'll quote a scripture. Then I'll quote a scripture. She'll quote a scripture. I'll quote a scripture. She'll quote it. And that's what we do, riding down the road, quoting scriptures. And we're getting stronger and stronger and stronger, just quoting scriptures. And our mind's getting renewed. The Holy Spirit uh, begins to take over, driving the car. And we just sit there and, 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 shoot, and, and say scriptures to one another. 
Say, we need to step out our little, maybe we need to step out of our little foxhole and change some things in our life and really begin to get in there and become fanatics at it. Would you mind going back and get that dark board for me? See, it's through practicing that we get good. Do we understand that? You know, sometimes it's hard for us to break some old habits. You know why? Because we practice those old habits for so long. Uh, it's, it's on the wall. Back there on the wall. Okay. Right against the wall. And bring the darts to it. I want you to hold it for me. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I, you know I never miss. You can trust your pastor. <laughs> but see, the more you practice something, whether good or bad, he didn't find them. You know where it is, up against the wall right there. The, there, there you go. Let me have the darts. Okay. How about me hold the darts and you hold the No, 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 no. no I, I got the floor now. They, they stand right over there. No, I want you to put it in front of you. <laughs> now, see, the more I practice, the better I get. But do we agree to that? I mean, that's a law. Well, you know, I'll say, I'll read one, I'll, huh, what? What? I'll read one verse of Scripture today. Oh, my goodness. Oh. But you know, the more I the more I practice, this thing is wobbly. The more I practice, <laughs> getting closer, getting closer. The more I practice, <laughs> no, I might hurt the, I might hurt the, but see, the more I practice, I can't even get in there, get in there, the better I get. All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. So, you know. Have you noticed these football players, they practice, that's why they're good. Well, you know, a person can go on like they've been going on and still, you know, they can, st you know, God will still love them and all that, but they have no victory in their lives. They have no joy in their lives. God wants to have us to have joy. How many of you know the joy of the Lord is your strength? And you can let one thing, one thing alter you and rob you of your joy. And now you don't have any strength. And let me tell you, what I'm teaching here, the older you get, if you practice this thing when you get my age, you'll have, you'll have some joy like I have. You'd never see me coming in this place without joy, without strength, without power, without a smile. I don't put on. I don't have to put it on. It radiates out of my spirit because I'm faithful, spending my time in the Word of God and having my fellowship with my Heavenly Father. And I know many of you do too. I'm not saying that you don't. But remember now, we're preaching to the world. These tapes go into the world now on the, on the Internet. And I, and I know that many of them, you come in here, I watch you. I watch everybody. You talk, you smile when somebody's not smiling. Can you tell when somebody, like David said, Oh, soul, why are thy cast down? And we're not scolding people. And I didn't learn this overnight. But you know, what? when I learned it, in my deepest, darkest valley, I made a decision 
devil, you ain't going to beat me no more. I'm going to stand on the word of God. If I die, glory to God, I'll be with Jesus. But I ain't putting up with your nonsense anymore. And I learned to pray every day. I come up against the enemy and I say, you devil, you demons of darkness. I rebuke every spirit that comes against my family. I come up against every spirit that comes against the shield of faith. I bind every spirit in the atmosphere that would put people down. I bind every spirit of rejection, every spirit of hurt, every spirit of wound. I reject those powers in the name of Jesus. I bind those powers. And God says, my weapons are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds that come against the people of God. We ministered to a woman just this week, back there in the office, Susan and me. All she could do was cry, cry. And that's all right, cry, cry. But i got to get her from here to here. And as we minister and begin to feed her the Word of God, faith Comes. God has given us all a measure of faith, but we can gain more faith. How? Somebody tell me. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing how? By the Word of God. That's why I encourage people to read the Bible out loud. Just read it out loud. But you got to rise up on the inside. I said you got to rise up on the inside. I could just see one of these women in, in the Walmart. Somebody comes up trying to take their purse. <laughs> Call 911. <laughs> Haul him away. <laughs> well, the devil's a robber. He's come to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's what Jesus said. Jesus don't lie. That's why when we read the Word of God, we got to find out what our part is and find out what His part is. Because He's done done His part, and He'll do His part every time. Yeah. When we line our confession up with what the Lord has done, glory to God. Time goes by fast when you're having fun. All right, I want to uh, turn to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 29. 1 Corinthians. Oh, this is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. All three of them are. Now, let's look at that. So that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying and boast in the presence of God. That is like, well, I am what I am by my effort. No, God takes all that away and turn to verse the next verse, 30. Notice this. But it is from him that you have your life. Everybody say life. 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 Are, you, are you running on your life or his life? I've told you about the old bulldozer we had years ago back in the 50s. I used to operate. And you had to start this bulldozer engine on natural gas to heat the, the engine up. Then you'd pull that, push this lever up, the gas would cut off, and the diesel fuel would get into the engine and boom, 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 You have a lot more power. So you could run on your natural gas. And I know that some people don't understand this, but the spirit arena is real. God is real. The Word of God is real. Life is real. There's a real life. It's the life of Christ. It's the resurrected life. It's the life that we get from the Word. It's the life that we get from the Spirit. That's real. But how many people are, haven't pushed the lever yet and get that resurrected diesel fuel operating in your engine where you'll have greater power to push over trees? See, we read the Word of God and we think, oh, that's a word. Oh, that's just a word that you have your life. 
We're not talking about natural life. We're talking about spiritual life. We're talking about a new life, a power, a Holy Ghost life. And it behooves us to tap into it. All right? In my darkest hour, I learned to tap into it and run on the diesel. In Christ, don't no, no, look at that. But it is from Him that you have your life in Christ Jesus. Everybody say, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. All right, you're in Christ. Therefore, that life is available. That life is available. That resurrected life. Here's what the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the. <clears throat> Help me. It just slipped my mind. Somebody quote it for me. Thank you. <clears throat> For the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of what? Sin and death. Put that up real quick. Uh, Romans um, 8 verse 2. Let them see that. Paul ain't just blowing smoke here. Paul, Paul ain't just talking about some imaginary thing. Look what it says. For the law of the spirit of life. See, as the Holy Spirit has come into us, there is a law of life in us now. But we have to activate that law through faith. And we have to say with our mouth, Lord, the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, and I am in Christ Jesus, you are in Christ Jesus. The law of our, own, <coughs> our new being, our new being, our spirit has been recreated. We don't have the old spirit no more. Our spirit has been recreated, a brand new you, a brand new me, a brand new spirit. And in that spirit, in the Holy Spirit, have become one. And we can tap into that life and live by that life through faith. Has freed me from the law of sin and death. What is sin and death? Down and out. No life. Just down and out. <clears throat> That's real. And it manifests itself. And you learn to live by that. And therefore, that whatever the law of sin and death is trying to produce in your life, it will not, it will not be manifested. Because you've been set free. By what? Another law, a greater law. <clears throat> An airplane. It's coming down the runway. The gravity is holding it. The law of sin and death, let's say, it represents the law of, of gravity. Something's going to set that aircraft free from that law. Somebody tell me what it is. Lift, lift, power as that uh, uh, engine, notice, as that power and that lift begins to lift, it lifts, lifts, lifts up, us up, 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 up from that law of sin and death. And we just feel like we're a nobody. We feel like we're the worst failure in the world. No, you're not. If you're in Christ, you are more than a conqueror. But you've got to get your brain to agree with what the Word says. You trip, we trip our own selves up by thinking about the law of sin and death, by thinking what the devil has told us. You're not a failure. But if you think you are, so is a man thinking of his heart, so is that man. You'll keep your own self down and you won't get off the runway. You won't get off the runway. Because why? Because you're agreeing more with the law of gravity than the law of lift, which is the Spirit of God, and He'll lift you up. This is real stuff that I'm talking about. It ain't no hanky-panky or spanky-danky. That's real. Now, let's go back to, uh, and we'll close. One more minute. Uh, go back to 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 30. That's what it says. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Once you tap into, the, into this knowledge and you're able by faith to accept it and appropriate it, the Holy Spirit does the work. He does the lifting. 
Can we understand that? That life that's it. He does the living. You don't have to lift yourself up. He'll do it. It'll just happen. But your faith is operating. I hope I haven't opened a keg of worms. Does anybody understand this gospel? <laughs> All right. Whom God made our wisdom from God revealed to us a knowledge, revelation knowledge of the divine plan of salvation. Now, what I am saying to you tonight has got to be transferred from regular knowledge into revelation knowledge. And when revelation knowledge hits you, woo, glory. That revelation knowledge will just make you jump. Watchman Nee, I don't know if you know him. I've read some of his books years ago. He tried to kill himself for years. I'm dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord, and he goes out and sins. He just could not understand that. I reckon myself to be dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. And he tried to make that happen, and then the revelation hit him that it already happened at Calvary when Christ died on the cross. The old watchman knee, the old Bob Tilton died right there. He don't exist no more. God don't see him no more. God sees the new man. The old man, someone said, well, why don't God just start all over again? He did. He killed the old Adam in us. And give us a brand new spirit, man. Amen. Glory to God. See, if we don't understand. <coughs> and accept it by faith. Accept it by faith. Accept it by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. First one has to believe in God, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But I've pondered on these scriptures for years. I've, I've cried, I've wept over them, I've prayed, I've fasted over them. Then all of a sudden the revelation begins to come in. Glory to God, what a new life. You sing that song, I'm a brand new creation, I'm a brand new man. I know I am now. I used to just sing it, just to, you know, sort of bulldoze everybody. <clears throat> but I know I'm a brand new man now. My past ain't there no more. Man, got rid of that load real quick, like, when that revelation. That's why I pray, God, I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon your people. The spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon all of us in a greater way. That the eyes of our heart may be enlightened, be flooded with light, be flooded with the revelation knowledge of who we are in Christ. You just know that you know that you know. And I'm going to read this. We've got to quit. <clears throat> Revealed to us a, okay, I said that. Previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy and our redemption, providing us. Providing our ransom. Who provided our ransom? God did when he sent his son. From eternal penalty for sin. So we don't have to worry about that eternal punishment no more. That's been dealt with by Christ. We're, our, our slate is clean. Brand new creatures in Christ. Whew. Now look at verse 31 and we'll close. <clears throat> so what is there for us to do? So then, as it is written, let him who boasts and proudly rejoices and glories, boasts and proudly rejoices and glory in the Lord. Case closed. Let's glory in the Lord. Thank you. Say, Lord, thank you for what you have done. We receive it by faith. If you said it, that's it. And we receive it by faith, regardless of how our feelings are. And we thank you for the victory.
In Jesus' name, amen. Now, amen. You hold that in your heart, in your mind, and you hold faith in God's word. It's just like if somebody slapped you, you would still st feel the sting maybe for a day. Like I hurt my finger, I still feel a little of the sting. That was a week ago. But I say it's healed, and eventually all the sting will be gone. It'll be healed. It takes a little time. So we have scarred ourselves. I'm talking about people in the church so much with our wrong thinking. We're not thinking according to the Word of God, not reaching out in faith, putting our faith in what God has said He's already done, and we're trying to do it ourselves. And nobody's got too much victory. But once you get that life operating, moving, you know how I get out of bed in the morning now to 81? <laughs> you want to know, right? <laughs> it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's his life in me. It's Jesus, brother, it's Jesus, sister. It's Jesus all the way. Oh, he's so wonderful. I can imagine when I get 90 getting out of that bed. <coughs> well, <coughs> <laughs> then I say, oh, the Lord is my strength. <coughs> the Lord is my strength. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. All right, church, if you're here tonight, anyone needs prayer? If you don't really know the Lord, you have a mental knowledge of Him, but you don't know in your spirit, your spirit has never, the Holy Spirit has never testified to your spirit that you're a, a child of God, come up and let us pray for you, and let's get it right in your life, and let's begin to live the resurrected life. Amen?